So I heard of what is known as uh, mapping. All of us we have heard of that mapping. Say it is uh, a landscape. Surveyors move there with their uh, instruments and other things. They will have some benchmarks and they will mark and finally they create a map of the landscape. So here we have a small hillock, here we have a lake, here we have got trees, here it is sand, here it is mud, here it is road, so many things. So everything will be printed on the map, of course, with their own uh, codings and other things. So when a person looks at the map, he will be comfortable with that landscape. As he will be comfortable in moving in that landscape. So this we call it as mapping. Now this is a physical, geographical, landscape mapping. Now the same concept of mapping uh, they have gone into in science uh, for this uh, mind mapping. Mind mapping. So what are all the things that are there in one's mind? So they try to understand through psychological uh, tests and experiments and they do this mind mapping. And mostly this mind mapping is uh, used in uh, narcotic analysis, that is for culprits who are not ready to speak out. So just uh, give them certain medicine which makes them uh, uh, mentally weak and they talk to them and they ask them so many questions and they answer, uh, okay, something like that. Uh, it is called as uh, mind mapping. And they've also gone for this uh, gene mapping. Every person we have got some genes containing uh, chromosomes, DNA, RNA, and all these are mapped. Of course, these, which are in the form of chromosomes and DNA and RNA, they are responsible for our personality and character. Certain genes, certain combinations of chromosomes will give us certain characters. So they have mapped this gene, gene mapping they have done. They have done this... Uh, chromosome mapping, they have done this DNA mapping and other things. And they claim that they have completed it, it's exhaustive, and we have done it. And what character comes from what combination of genes and DNA? So this is called as DNA, DNA mapping or gene mapping. Now I'm speaking of now, in the light of the mantra, what we are discussing, the spiritual mapping, the spiritual mapping. That is, we are all such it's. So it's mapping of the Satchit as a whole. It's a very, very complex process. And where it comes in the light of our mantra, it says, Utkrama Ataha, from where you are, you move ahead. So from where I am, to understand it, we have to go for the spiritual mapping. I have to map my own things. The soul, my own soul, I have to map it. And find out what is there, what is not there, to what extent what is there. So how to do it? It is possible <clears throat> not by any psychological test, it is not by any laboratory test, it is possible only by, repeat, only by self-analysis. Self-analysis. We have to analyze ourselves. Atma Vimarsha. So only by doing this it is possible. We have to look at ourselves, meditate upon and find out what are all the qualities, what are all the some skaras I have. So that's very, very important. So when I do this, yes, everything will be fine. Nobody else can do my mapping, my spiritual mapping. We only have to do it. And one very, very important thing here is, we should be very honest in doing it. Why I'm telling honesty is, every one of us, we are a bundle of positives and negatives. So when there are positives, there is no difficulty in analyzing. But wherever we have got or come across our negativities, yes, we have got a problem. We are not ready to accept it. Our ego comes in the way. But we should be very, very honest. Because this process helps us in our progress. If you are not honest, if you are not ready to accept my positives and negatives as they are, I cannot achieve my progress. So it's very, very important, it's very, very important. This introspection is the only way available for the mapping of our own selves. 
and spiritual man. So by doing this introspection, I should know where I am. What is my level? What is my stratum? What is my phase where I am? At what level I am? So once I understand this, from there, I have to move ahead. Utkrama. From where I am. From where I am is Ataha. This is possible only by introspection, nothing else. Now while introspecting, while introspecting, it's a very, very complex process, but we have to do it as well as possible with some definite parameters. This is very, very important. Definite parameters we should have. Of course, the instructions as to what these parameters have to be and how I to evaluate myself, <coughs> they are all explained in the Vedas. To summarize, to summarize. And what I am telling is not exhaustive because it is a very, very complex structure. There are so many things to be understood about us. Certain things I am trying to just share with you. My likes and dislikes. I like certain things, I don't like certain things. Starting from things, starting from thoughts, and starting from people. I may like some people, I may not like certain people. I may like certain things, I may not like certain things. I may like certain thoughts, I may not like certain thoughts. It varies from person to person. It's a totally different combination and different proportion for different people. So this I should be able to analyze. What are the things that I like? What are the things I dislike? Honestly, if I don't do it honestly, I'm the sufferer. I'm the loser. More and more honestly I do it, yes, I benefit very much. What things I like, what things I don't like, what thoughts I like, what thoughts I don't like. What people I like, what people I don't like. This is one way of analyzing, that's parameters. Then, how we react for situations, people, thoughts, this have to analyze. Okay, I react positively, I react with anger, I react with jealousy. I don't react at all, I'm neutral. Whatever it is, for different situations, for different thoughts, for different things, how I react. So this is another parameter. Another best parameter for this is, we are speaking of this Arishadvarga, all of us know about it. Kama, Krodha, Lobha, Moha, Madha, Matsariya. We take them as the parameters to what level each one is working. How much karma is there? Desires. How much anger is there? Krodha. Lobha. Avariciousness. Moha. <clears throat> Moha is affliction. To what extent it is there? To what extent I am attached? Madha. Arrogance. Matsarya. Jealousy. How much it is there? Now that itself is a complex subject. Okay, I am avaricious. Lobha, I am speaking of Lobha. How much I am avaricious? Now here, I am not equally avaricious to all things. Certain things I am avers. I am not avaricious at all. Certain things, avariciousness is very little. In certain things, I am too avaricious. So I have to analyze what level it is there for different things, different situations. Just I am speaking of avariciousness. Jealousy. Once again, for what things I am jealous, with what people I am jealous, and for what circumstances I am jealous. There are hundreds of circumstances. So how is my jealousy factor, if I am to call it jealousy element, how much it is, at what level it is. This we have to analyze and analyze and analyze. These are all our parameters. How much my anger is, and what circumstance. And I told you very clearly that this anger without thought, Sudden anger, eruption of anger is dangerous. But if the same anger comes after sufficient thought and analysis, we don't call it as anger, we call it as manu. How much manu is there? How much anger is there? How much anger can be converted into manu? Has been converted? How much is pending? Is it under my control or not? There are so many things. It has a lot of questions to ourselves. And yet, Honest answers. 
that takes us towards evaluating our own selves that is the mapping of our own souls spiritual mapping call it now this is a very big process it's not very simple and it's not very easy it's a complex structure but still likes and dislikes actions and reactions the six arisha dwargas we have to analyze for all these things and make a spiritual picture of our own selves so that we will know what we are as it is is just analyzing just analyze next what we are going to do is after analyzing we try to segregate these things whatever we have mapped it into what is positive and what is negative that is the next step of analysis we are differentiating them what helps us and the world what gives us strength what gives us purity what is transparent what is open yes they are all positive what i cannot make it transparent what i want to hide all those things are negative what results in spiritual ill health physical ill health mental ill health social ill health social disturbance so whatever is a cause for disturbance is all negative whatever is the cause for harmony yes they are all positive so with these parameters i should be able to analyze all these things into two classes one is positive one is negative first to know what is there next one analyzing it into positive and negative now i am ready for the next step that's what he says utkrama once i know all these qualities of mine once my spiritual mapping is over and once i analyze them into positive and negative now is the whole process starts with krama ataha that is my starting point the analysis of my own character analysis of my own personality and then segregating them into positive and negative now i start with krama you move ahead so how do i understand to move ahead so it's very simple we have discussed that which contributes towards our spiritual strength spiritual purity that is positive that is progress what doesn't contribute to the strength of the spirit purity of the spirit it is degeneration it is going down our path to fall down so this you understand what is progress and what is not progress so once we are able to identify what is progress and what is not progress now our journey is towards progress in the path of progress so utkrama ataha from where you are you move ahead mavapatha falling down is not or taking the opposite direction is not your nature is not for your benefit don't do it be careful so now this we have to do at every step of our life it's not for one hour okay i do yoga and dhyana and everything is over no this is yoga and dhyana which is to be done always as far as i am awake when i am awake i have to do all these things consciously deliberately that's once again in three steps one step is thoughts i have to censor my thoughts i have to look at my thoughts i have to inspect my thoughts so what are all the thoughts that come to my mind of course mind is an instrument the thoughts are prompted by the soul behind the sachit so what are the thoughts that come i am able to understand it through my mind that's the instrument that's a screen that's the in which i can see my thoughts so what are all the thoughts i am getting how much they are positive how much they are not positive how much they are utilitarian useful to all how far it is contrary that is it takes things of the welfare of the whole universe or is it selfish so all these things are analyzed every thought of mine has to be screened every thought of mine has to be weighed has to be checked for its purity and strength if it passes these checks fine that thought is good we can continue with that otherwise 
the thought should be then and there let us snub it and cut it down i cannot allow that thought to grow it should be nipped in the very bud where it's where we get this bhargaha in gayatri mantra we speak of bhargaha tatsavitrayanam bhargo devasya devam that bharga is this bharga is that power which nips back thoughts in the very stage of bud and it starts budding then itself we check it and it is not a good thought we nip it and the power to do it is called as bhargaha and we pray god to give us that bhargaha bhargo devasya dhimahi give it and we are going to hold on to that and we'll carry it on with us every moment that's a prayer we have got in gayatri mantra but unfortunately what we done is we have converted this whole gayatri mantra into a beautiful idol with six faces 12 hands and we forget about it maybe we offer some fruits we offer from flowers we offer from this and say okay we have performed gayatri puja no gayatri puja is not external gayatri puja is totally internal internal every thought of mine has to be weighed every thought of mine has to be censored and it is not a fitting thought it should be burned down then and there and that is bhargas it's an internal process and in speaking of spiritual thing 100% of it is all internal maybe very little is external that is a reflection of what goes on in me first it should happen in me in me 100% the whole of spirituality is that after it happens inside yes it gets reflected it gets manifested externally but external manifestation is not the goal the goal is the transformation within now this should happen and gayatri mantra is a wonderful power for us it reminds us about this power that is bhargas which i have to employ to destruct to destroy the unwanted bad samskaras so by doing so my progress is assured and that's what it says utkrama achieve your progress move ahead improve yourself so the improvement is very clear where it results in or what can give the spiritual strength and spiritual purity that is good and that is progress the opposite of it is not progress is degeneration mama pattaha mama patta don't fall down don't get yourself degenerated don't spoil yourself now so once again at this point we are reminded again and again that it is possible only in human life it is fortunate that we are all human beings if at all this can be done for our benefit when i say our it is such it our souls our spirits if it can be done it is possible only in human life there is no other opportunity this is a very very rare opportunity what we have got for our own benefit for our own improvement it is so invaluable so invaluable so this we have to do if we don't do it i am at loss i am at loss a rare opportunity i am missing what happens in the next life we don't know it depends upon our karma phala we are not able to analyze or weigh our karma phala we don't know how to do it it's according to the cosmic law now what happens in the next life we don't know but we are assured of this life where we are human beings and where we can do this sadhana it's possible right that's what he says utkrama ataha from where you are after this all analysis and this mapping of your personality the spiritual mapping move ahead don't waste in a single moment if you miss it is gone what happens if we don't know how long we are going to live that is also is uncertain we are alive now this moment over what happens the next moment we never know you see the whole life is so uncertain so in understand all these things what happens next if it is uncertain if you don't know 
then the present moment becomes so invaluable that make the best use of this present moment. Live in the present moment. Do in the present moment. Achieve in the present moment. Next point, you don't know. When it comes, okay, we'll do it. This is a reality of life. We should realize it. Only then we will not waste even a single moment in our life. We try to use every moment of our life for the spiritual upliftment. I cannot waste, I cannot waste. It is too costly for me. I will not use my moments for material things. Of course, material things are required. I am not denying it. But I will not go after it beyond my basic needs. Because every moment I spend for the materials, it's a waste because at the end I'm just throwing it out and getting out. I cannot carry even a particle of dust with me. You see? Something which I'll throw out one day, I'll not waste time on that. What is necessary, what is needed, only that much I'll have. And the remaining moments I spend for my spiritual upliftment. Because whatever I gain spiritually, it comes with me for lies in future. That will help me. That will come with me. I can carry them forward. So the comparison between what comes with me and what doesn't come with me will be very clear to me. And my emphasis will be on those things which come with me. And that is the spiritual upliftment. That is the Sutra Madha. Progress is not in terms of materials. Progress is not in terms of this external wealth or prosperity. The progress is in terms of spiritual progress. Every minute is invaluable. And it warns. Be careful. Moving ahead is always right. But at the same time, take care that you will not slip down. There are so many slips. Where we can slip down. Even without knowing. But be careful about that also. Whenever you are taking a step, be careful that it is always forward and a firm step that you will never fall down. Maavapatha. Don't fall down. That is not your purpose. That is not your goal. That is not the way you have to do it. Take every step firmly ahead. Utkramataha. Maavapatha. It's very clear. Don't have a doubtful step. Be sure and step it. Be firm. Go ahead. Let not any step of yours be shaky. Because if the step is shaky, maybe you will fall down. Maopatha, don't fall down. That's not the way. And the whole thing which troubles us is the fear of death. That uncertainty what I have been speaking of now. Whenever I have to move ahead boldly, with a firm step, always something troubles me and there is a fear of death. Am I going to die in the next moment? I'm going to die in the next moment. What next? Now this fear of death can be overcome. Not death. This I explained earlier. We cannot overcome death and not we. Nobody can overcome death. Death is imminent. 100% certain. Nobody can escape death. But the valiant, the brave can always overcome the fear of death, not death. Murutyoha Padvisham Avamunchamanaha. That's what Mantra says. Throw down, break down the shackles of the fear of death. Then you can take these steps firmly and boldly and you can move ahead. Whatever comes, you are not afraid of. Nothing can stop you in your path of progress. You have to break down the shackles of death, the fear of death. How to do it? It's possible only when we understand what death is. So what is death? What is birth? Every soul is eternal. Anadi Ananta, all such is. This we have discussed earlier, sufficient number of times, and we are reminding ourselves about this again and again. Such is eternal. 
there is no question of birth and death for this soul anadi just existing since a long time and it exists for a long time no beginning no end beginningless endless anadi ananta so it neither gets created and it never gets distracted it just exists and exists that is its nature now this birth is same when the soul gets its own instrument to function without an instrument the sachit is not capable of functioning it can neither act nor react that is its limitation sachit if it has to act and react it needs a tool in the form of sharira indriya manas made out of another eternal entity called sat sat is the material thing maybe we call it as panchabhuta maybe the modern science calls it the elements under the eight plus periodic table so this whole universe physically is made up of these elements and these elements the tool sharira indriya manas is prepared and that is assigned to one sachit and say say this is the instrument for you you can use it for 100 plus years so you are endowed with a tool the soul getting connected with its tool we call it as birth it happens in the womb of the mother and it takes 9 months for the tool to develop and by the end of the ninth month and in the 10th month she she delivers the child and the child from then on can function independently with his sharira indriya manas that doesn't need the protection of the womb of the mother and it grows outside of course it needs a protection and other so many inputs and it grows and becomes so independent one day and it can carry, carry on on its own and of course it's possible for it to support other things which wants their body which wants their tool it can sharir indramans it can give it can manufacture it's a process it's a process a continuous process and because this process is kept alive yes all the such is they go on getting their sharir indramans again and again and again this is a big process the process of the birth and death the process of procreation the process of reproduction generation of generation now the whole process here is the sharira indriya manas is given specifically to one soul sachit and the sachit getting its own tool called as abhimani sharira now this we call it as the birth tool is from an eternal material sat so the material again is eternal a particular structure is manufactured and it is gifted to the soul the soul gets it the soul getting its gift of sharira indriya manas we call it as birth is a union of two things is a union of the sachit and sat in a special way according to so many cosmic rules and this union of the sat and the sachit we call it as birth it's just a union it's an event where two things come together the soul in that is also eternal the basic material of the sharir indra manas is also eternal and is sat sat is eternal sachit is eternal now the sachit gets a certain part of the another eternal thing sat for its functioning as a tool this we call it sat nothing new has come nothing new has come now totally the opposite side of it the mrtyu the death what is it it is a separation of these two sat and sachit what got united in the beginning and then they get separated what got integrated in the beginning gets disintegrated in the end nothing is lost nothing is lost nothing is destroyed once again the two entities sachit says i cannot use this tool further i have been using for 80 years 100 years it's worn out 
I cannot use this. I want a fresh tool. So it says, I am throwing out this tool. Over. The tool and the operator, they get separated. And the tool, what is thrown out, is again recycled in the form of Sat. The material, whatever is thrown out, can always be reused. That is the Sat. Panchabhutas. They continuously undergo transformation and they take new and newer forms. So this is thrown out, it is disintegrated and converted into the basic elements and from, from that again, something new is constructed. It's recycled. So have we lost anything? We have not lost anything. The Satchit continues his journey with new apparatus, with the new Sharir Indira Manas, in accordance with its Karmapala, its capacity, how well it has used earlier, upon that it gets a new instrument, and the old instruments get recycled. That's all. An event where Sat and Sachit come together is birth. And another event, another happening, another occurrence, where the Sat and the Sachit get separated is Mrityu. What is it we have gained in birth? What is it we have lost in birth? Nothing. We have gained nothing. We have lost nothing. Because the two things involved in it, the Sat and the Sachit, both are eternal entities. There is a union, there is a separation. Now what actually happens is, because of this union in the beginning, a lot of relationships are established. That is the thing. Relationships have come. No entity has come. Sat is not new. Satchit is not new. They were eternal. The eternity continues. The only thing is, because some people are responsible for giving this Satchit, the Sat, the Sharir Indira Manas, certain relationships get established. Father, mother, brother, sister. Then we've got other relationships depending upon the space where they take birth, where this event happens. We've got different places on the globe. So it can happen in any part of the globe. So that where is a person may take birth in a state A, another person can take a birth in state B, country A, country B, one corner here, one corner there, yes. So they become specific to one place, they become specific to certain relationships. They become specific to certain environments. Now that is what gets established. And at the end of the span of life, at that point of death, all these relationships, all these attachments with environment, everything that gets seized, that expires. Nothing is lost, nothing is gained. The relationships are established and the relationships are gone. An environment is attached and that environment is gone. We are given some opportunity to perform our sadhana. So the sadhana kshetra is given to us in a limited way. And change of sadhana kshetra takes place. And this change is inevitable. It's inevitable. I cannot control it. I cannot control it. It is going to happen. I may have a lot of relationships. Okay, with people, with things and so many things. All these relationships are going to end one day. Whether I want it or not, whether I like it or not, whether I know it or not. That's the nature of these relationships. It's purely a temporary relationship. Of course, this temporary relationship may run for uh, uh, maybe a century. 60 years, 80 years, 100 years, even beyond 100 years. But all these relationships are going to end one day. That's the reality. That's the truth. And when it ends, uncertain. We don't know. It may end now, it may end tomorrow. But it is going to end. But it is going to end. It never is eternal. The relationships are never eternal. Our relationship with the environment is not eternal. It is going to end one day. Once again, as I said, whether we like it or not, whether we want it or not, whether we know it or not, it is going to end. It will happen. It will happen. 
See, when you realize this, when we realize this, of course, relationships are inevitable. At the same time, we will have those relationships in a way, being aware that this relationship is going to end one day. Yes, the relationship has been established. This is my father, this is my mother, this is my brother, this is my friend. Okay, we get a new friend. We will have that friendship for a few years. Then they go somewhere, I go somewhere. We forget about that friendship totally. We are aware of it. We are used to it. I buy a thing. It gives me service for a few years. Then I cannot use this. I throw it. I sell it in my garage sales over. I know. This is all. This is the period with which I was with it. Now I cannot. I will throw it. We deliberately understand the separation of these relationships with people and things. And it also the same thing happens. But the only thing is, here it happens in pieces and at death it happens wholesale. All relationships at one stroke are gone. The whole environment 100% will get changed. That's all. In small proportions, it has been happening at every step of our life. I never knew all you, all you people. I never knew. So it so happened that now we are all friends. Yes, I know you, you know me. Maybe after some time. Depending upon your way of life, I may take one path, you may take one path. And over a period, I just forget who you are and you will forget who I am. That's reality, that's reality. And we are used to it. The same thing happens in total in death. That's all. The same thing. The proportion what happens now is small. One person, two persons, one thing, two things. But in death, it is wholesale. Lock, stock and barrel, we say it. 100%, the whole thing changes. The whole relation gets severed. That's all. Anyhow, we know what it is. Anyhow, we know what it is in small proportions. Now, when it happens in a bigger proportion, which is inevitable, why fear it? Why fear it? It's a process. It's a process. Okay, to talk and give a lecture is wonderful. But to imagine it and tolerate it, yes, it requires continuous practice. Assiduous practice. So to think and think and think and analyze and understand the relationships with people and understand our relationship with the environment and the things. They are going to change. And it is uncontrollable. And when it happens, it is definitely uncertain. Be prepared for it. Any moment it may happen. Husband, wife, children, parents, friends, anything, everything gets severed in one stroke of death. Gone. No friends, no father, no mother, no husband, no wife, no children, nothing. No environment, no my house, no my money, no my land, nothing. Everything is gone in one stroke. Yes, that is reality. That is reality. I should realize it. By knowing this, by knowing this, what should happen? That is very important. Generally, once we know this, we get afraid. We get frightened. Oh, this relationship with my father, mother, husband, wife, children, it will be gone. Yes, it will be gone. Then how do I live? The things which, which I am attached, all these things will vanish. One moment. Yes, it will vanish. Oh, how to take it? So immediately we will be frightened. Immediately we will be under fright and we will be fearful. No, that is not the result. What we want is, yes, we are going to get separated one day. When it happens, we don't know. So what I should do? The positive way of looking at is, I will make the best of this relationship. I will have the relationship in the best way possible and enjoy that relationship. Being aware that it is going to end one moment and that moment could be anything. So my concentration, my emphasis will be on the best relationship with people and best relationship with things. Make the best use of it. Enjoy that relationship. Don't grumble, don't fight, don't quarrel. Love. Give love, take love. 
be happy, be harmonious. Make the best of the material what is there. And don't go after the material, whatever is required for a minimum simple way of life, only have that. Beyond that, don't worry about it. Because anyhow, you are not going to take it with you. And all material what is there with me, I cannot enjoy it. So, a simple example. If I have got 20 chairs in my house, 20 sofas in my house, can I sit in all the 20 at one time? Never. I can sit only only one. So, other 19 is vacant or somebody will use it. For my sitting, if I need one sofa, one chair, fine, I will have it. There are three people in home, three is enough. I may be able to earn 20. It's not a question of my capacity to earn. But I deliberately restrict my relationship with my physical environment, materialistic environment. Because I know it is going to end one day. So I don't want to burden myself with those things. As minimum as possible. It is possible for me to sit on the floor. Excellent. That's enough. I don't need even a sofa or a chair. I'll squat, get up and move. If you can sleep on a mat and get good sleep, excellent. I don't need a cot, I don't need a bed. The basic minimum things. It appears something strange when I'm speaking like this. But there's a bare truth, there's a bare reality. Certain minimum things are required. I'm not denying it. But we should deliberately understand and put a cap on it and say this is enough. This is enough. So when I say this is enough, that's what we call it as satisfaction. That's what we call it as contentment. And this satisfaction or contentment is the cause for our living peacefully and happy. One who is not satisfied, one who is dissatisfied can never experience happiness in life. They will always be grumbling, I don't have this, I don't have this, this is not right, this is not. And grumbling is never, is called happiness. It's the most unhappy condition. No complaints, no grumblings. I'm happy with what I have. When I take only that stance, then I can experience happiness in life, peace in life. And concentrate on my spiritual pursuits. This is very, very important. Spiritual pursuit is also a very important goal in my life, in particular the human life. Not all is derived from our relationship with death. That's the separation. The separation with people and things is going to happen. So it is going to happen, it's best we keep these relationships with material to the minimum possible and the relationships in the best way possible. It's very, very important that we to understand. The relationship with materials has to be minimum. And the relationship with other creatures, with other living beings, only then we will be able to enjoy the relationship as long as you are with them. And one day it is going to separate it. We we'll say goodbye. You are in very good friendship with people. You made the best use of the things. I have lived a better life, I have lived a very good life, goodbye. You will have no repentance to die. In fact, we can enjoy death. It's going to happen one day. It's going to happen one day. I'm not afraid of it. Because my relationship with all the other people was wonderful and my experience with all things was wonderful. The whole life was a wonderful experience. And because the whole experience was wonderful, I await the same experience in the next life and I am happy to move on to it. What is happening now at the point of death? A worn out apparatus, a worn out fairy, the money is thrown out and get a brand new thing. For continuing my amazing, wonderful relationships. Is there anything to fear? No. See, this is we have to overcome that fear of death. I should understand the realities. I should make the best use of time available. I should make the best moments of my relationships. I should make the best use of the materials what I have got. That to minimum. Not burdening myself. 
then the whole life what i'm leading now becomes a celebration becomes a celebration now the whole life i've enjoyed the whole life i've celebrated with best relationships with the best use of minimum material what i have got without any burden and that moment comes when the whole picture the whole background will change the environment and the relationship will change it is going to change i am ready for it because i know how to make the best use of the situation and to have the best relationships i got training in this birth for 80 years 100 years i am trained now i know how the relationships have to be and this training and it, this samskara can be for, taken forward to the next life to the spirit but if i acquire wealth wealth will not come with me not in a dust particle will come with me but i would make it a beautiful experience if i make it as a beautiful learning that will come with me i will come with i'm not going to lose it so my emphasis is on having the best relationships and the knowledge to use whatever is given to me in the best way possible that to the very minimum thing we think on these lines yes even death also becomes a celebration because jirnani vasamsi that's what they speak in gita jirnani vasamsi it means torn out clothes yatha vihaya say if i got a torn out clothes okay i purchased it before 10 years it's all torn rag will i be happy It, very happy by throwing it and getting it a new shirt by getting it a new apparel that's what happens in death a torn out clothes a dilapidated house is rejected and i get it a new brand new shirt brand new apparel brand new house there is a cause for enjoyment there is a cause for celebration there is nothing to cry there is nothing to worry because i am in new environment new relationships and i know how to handle it because i learned it in this life that's what i have to learn actually so even death is a celebration there is nothing to fear there is nothing to fear it is something which is going to happen so whatever i have got i have to learn and understand with this opportunity what is given to me as a human being and make the best use of it in the coming life is only shifting off the framework where i am now this framework is different where i am associated with certain people associated with certain things and this whole framework will change and i get into new relationships and new things fine fine and i am trying to handle situations i am trying to handle things i am trying to handle people and relationships so whatever be the new relationship whatever be the new things new environment new framework yes i'll fit in there well because my learning my understanding my experiences in the form of samskaras i am capable of taking it forward it comes with me that helps me you see when i start thinking about life and death like this there is nothing to fear i'll be very comfortable i'll be very happy it's just a change of environment in this life i have been used to this i've been used to this think of you people where you are born what is your situation your parents your brothers your sisters your friends your school your environment your country your house your temple your uh, town your so many things now does all that there now no you are totally in a different foreign environment now your environment is totally different your relationship is totally different your place is different everything is different yes in the beginning you are anxious understand but now you are comfortable you are at home you know there you are used to it you are used to it the relationships what you had in your younger days is not there now the environment where you were born and brought up that is not there 
that are not comfortable you are every one of us every one is i was born and brought up in a particular environment certain relationships now it has all changed a lot my mother is no more my father is no more when i was young i had no wife now the relationship is different i had lot of friends now those friends are not there my friends are new now then i had no daughter son son in law nothing now i have i never dreamt of a grand son earlier but now i have have i got used to it all the time yes i have got used because that is the very nature of life now the only thing is all this is happening in one framework in this one life and the same thing happens in another framework and the shifting from one frame to another frame is what we call as death what is great in that what is great in that the frames keep on changing the frames keep on changing lot of frames have been changed from our day of birth from our younger days to this day lot of frames have changed we have carried on we have lived on we have adjusted everything has happened but one thing is there are some common factors here so because we consider it though different frames the bigger frame we consider as one but the smaller frames have been changing continuously and we are used to it and the same way the bigger frame also changes along with all the smaller frames in one stroke this we call as death what is great in that what is there to fear you see we think with this perspective death also becomes enjoyable death also becomes a celebration and we will never get stuck it happens okay we take it we take it in a stride we take it in a jolly mood it is a change of environment i go to a new environment i get new friends i get new relationships everything is new but i will be the same but one thing is certain i will be the same not with this sharira indra manas but with a different sharira indra manas my tool will be different my apparatus will be different there also there is a cause for celebration because this apparatus become old torn out worn out dilapidated i can't use it further throw it out get a new one carry on that's all is death yet a shift of environment is just a shift of the relationship that is shifting relationships and things take it in a stride enjoy it go ahead now this is how we are understand it this is how we understand it now all this what i am telling you he definitely promise are not my words are not my words i would that there are so many mantras in vedas the total sum of it the total gist of it is what i shared with you now <laughs> anyhow as a subsidiary to this part of the mantra mrityo padvi shama munchamana we shall look into other mantras also you can note down one mantra for that ime jeeva ha ime jeeva ha विमृत्ति आववृत्रन इंग मृत्यु नमस्कार को इमे जीवा विमृत्ति आववृत्रन आववृत्रन अभूद्रा अभूद्रा देवहूतिर्नो अभूद्रा देवहूतिर्नो अभूद्रा लाइन हाफ दि मंत्र इमे जीवा विमृत्ति आववृत्रन अभूद्रा देवहूतिर्नो अद्य शर्मा जी प्राण इमे जीवा 
इमे जीवा हा जीवा हा इमे जीवा हा विमृत्ये ही विमृत्ये ही आवो वृत्रम विमृत्ये ही कैन यू ब्रेक इट डाउन आई हाँ नो इट्स वन वर्ड विमृत्ये ही इट्स वन वर्ड विमृ विमृत्ये ही तया आई विमृत्ये ही विसर्ग विमृत्ये ही अस्तु इमे जीवा हा विमृत्ये ही आवो वृत्रन अभूभद्रा देवहूतिर्नो अध्या अबूहू हम्म अबूत 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 दैट बिकम्स अबूद अबूद भद्रा बिकॉज़ ऑफ़ दैट बाद दैट तब बिकम्स द अबूद अस्तु भद्रा देवहूतिर्नो अध्या देवहूतिर्नो अध्या वन लाइन प्राचो अगाम प्राचो अगाम नृत हसाय अगाम प्राचो अगाम नृत हसाय द्राघीय आयु द्राघीय आयु प्रतरम दधाना द्राघीय आयु दधाना द्राघीय आयु प्रतरम दधाना द्राघीय आयु प्रतरम दधाना नृत्य ये प्राचो अगाम नृत्य ये प्राचो अगाम नृतये 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 अस्तु प्राचो अगाम नृतये हसाय अस्तु द्राघीय आयु प्रतरम दधानाह द फर्स्ट दा इज अल्प प्राण द सेकंड इज महा प्राण दधानाह सो टू लाइंस द मंत्र इज ओवर ऋग्वेदा ऋग्वेदा Ten point one eight point three. Ten point one eight point three. Tenth mandala, eighteenth sukta, and third mantra. Now take the same mantra once again. First three, first three lines as it is. Ime jiva ha vimrutti hi avavrutran abhut bhadra devahu tirno adya. One more over. Third line. Prancho agaman drtaye hasaya. Same thing. Last line it undergoes a change. Sui raso. Last line. In place of dragi ayu prataram dhana. In that place, we take a different line. Sui raso. Vidathamo. Sui raso vidathamo. Videma. स्वीरासो विदथामो विदेमा विदथामो दिस इज विदथामो दाय सल्पो प्राण था इस महाप्राण विदथामो विदेमा दिस इज अथर्वा टेल पॉइंट टू पॉइंट ट्वेंटी टू Twelve point two point twenty two. First three lines are same. The last line is different. One is in Rig Veda, another one is Athar Veda. Twelve point two point twenty two. Now this part also I have been telling and again again. The whole four Vedas put together. You will not find even a single contradiction. Saying something in one place and saying totally the opposite thing in the other place. No. Twenty thousand three hundred dollar mantras have got all Vedas put together, and you will find not even a single contradiction. This is a unique feature of Vedas. Whereas 
you find such contradictions in almost all other sources of knowledge including quran and bible including bhagavad gita including ramayana bharata bhagavata puranas nothing is an exception if a lot of contradictions in that many contradictions are visible on the very face of it i need not even go deep into it on the face of it itself will be clear it will be conspicuous this is our conspicuous on the face of it we can see there is contradiction whereas in the vedas even if you search even if you research you will not find even a single contradiction in these 20300 odd mantras not to be believed don't believe you find out you find out we have been discussing so many pieces of vedas mantras and mantras from uh, if i am right almost a year or more than that have you at any point of time found out contradiction in what you have noted is open for it inspect not to begin never on the contrary now this is very important on the contrary you find these mantras complementary to one another what is said in one mantra is supported and explained in another mantra very much they go hand in hand one supports the other mantra one explains the other mantra instead of contradicting they are complementary they supplement no contradiction what say as is a unique feature of the vedas infallible proof the one what you have now ime jeeva vimrutte hi avrutran it is there in rigveda it is also there in atharva veda and they are never contradictory they are never opposite they support they enhance they reinforce one another what is said in the rigveda mantra is reinforced with the atharva mantra of course with a different line in the fourth one but that goes to support it there's not contradict now what is there in the atharva mantra is supported by what is there in the rigveda mantra they move hand in hand they never contradict lot of examples are given already if you make a big note of it if you can make a research paper on that and say the things what we got in vedas they are all complementary or supplementary and they never contradict we can prove it this is one more proof what we got and is a unique feature of the vedas i repeat again in no other repeat in no other source of knowledge this quality is there how how yes i am anxious i am inquisitive know the reason the reason is vedas are divine vedas are aparusheya is given by a super intelligent source whereas all other things say maybe bible quran ramayana bharata this and that everything they are all out of human brain they are all the products of human brain they are all aparusheya now this what differentiates aparusheya and aparusheya aparusheya is by god who is omniscient sarvajna because the sarvajna shakti is very clear and it's very very straight forward and contradiction free because from an omniscient but a human brain has got its own limitations has got its own disturbances and a product is human being cannot reach that level of aparusheya product therefore we find lot of problems lot of contradictions and things may be complementary may not be complementary may be supplementary may not be we are not sure about it that is why you say veda is our ultimate resort veda is our ultimate pramana veda pramana is the best if you rely upon it yes you will never get disturbed and you will never go astray you are on the right path you are with right knowledge if you depend on anything else other than vedas brahmana aranyaka upanishad ramayana bhagavata quran bible name anything we cannot give this assurance we cannot give this because they are all parts of human brain and the limitation of the human brain is there in all those it may it may not 
but it doesn't mean that it doesn't have anything good though. no definitely it has got certain good things all these things what i refer to not from quran bible to bhagavad gita yes there are so many good things but one difficult problem is along with those good things we have got some other polluting salts because of the human brain because of the human experience because of the human prejudices because of the human experiences <laughs> whereas it is a product of the omniscient i got everything pure chaste everything good no pollutants no interpolations no contradictions you are free from that now that's why we respect vedas so much that's why vedas live even today as a good guide to the whole humanity not to be believed not to be believed you would study your research if it is true you take it if it is not true throw it don't believe it don't believe it. don't take it for granted just because i have said it because somebody has said no proofs i am giving proofs i am giving this very mantra from rigveda and atharveda they are complementary to one another so when is a proof of it hundreds anyhow anyhow this mantra ime jeeva ha vimrutti avavrutran abhu bhadra devahutirno adya pancho agaman rate hasaya rakhiyai ho pratanam dadhana rugveda suvira so vidathamo videma as a third this we are studying as a subsidiary mantra in support of in understanding the piece of the mantra in earlier one that is mrutyo padvisham avamanchamana that is a part we are trying to study and to understand that better i have taken one mantra here which is almost similar in atharva and rigveda so we will discuss about this mantra and after that we will go for several other mantras discussing about death and once we study all those mantras we will be thorough with mrutyo padvisham avamanchamana and continue with our basic mantra so thank you for the day